From the headquarters of Telesur English in Quito, Ecuador. I'm Carla Gonzalez and this is From the South. We begin with news that police in the United States have broken into Venezuela's embassy and arrested four members of the Embassy Protection Collective. Police officers forced their way into the embassy and arrested the four activists. The action is a violation of international law and the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations. The move has sparked widespread condemnation as crowds in defense of Venezuela's sovereignty gather outside the embassy in Washington, D.C. So let's take a look on what people outside the Venezuelan embassy had to say. One of the demonstrators protesting the illegal U.S. intervention in the embassy happens to be precisely a former State Department diplomat. This is what she had to say. The U.S. diplomat for 16 years, and let me just tell you this idea of a uh, um, uh, police force uh, invading uh, a diplomatic premises it gets shivers to all of the people that are in diplomatic missions all over Washington and all over the world. Uh, as, as we see the U.S. Uh, going in on behalf of an unelected person uh, to do a regime change uh, uh, that the Trump administration wants in order to get the oil of Venezuela for sure and all the economic resources that will flow from the U.S. Uh, now I've opened and closed embassies around the world, but it's never been closed because the police We've have seen this before invaded in Iraq. A, this is Iraq an embassy. All over again. I mean, no. People will not And when you look for, at other places, I mean, the United States has had embassies blown up around the world because of actions of the U.S. government. I mean, the U.S. embassy in Beirut has been blown up twice. The embassy in Islamabad, Pakistan, has been burned twice. Uh, the consulate in Benghazi has been burned. Four people burned to death in there because people are fed up with the actions like this of the U.S. government. So this sort of thing has repercussions for the U.S interests and when when uh, Trump says yeah there are threats to US interests around the world you're goddamn right there are because of what the US government is doing to people around the world so this is really a dangerous dangerous thing that the US government is doing and we're it's going to be interesting to see what court order they are using to rationalize this thing Mara Verheyden Hilliard the attorney representing the embassy protection collective spoke with members of the media from outside the embassy um, I've just been on the other side of the building where I was speaking with law enforcement. They are telling me that um, the peace actors inside the building have been removed from the building, although we're not able to see them. Uh, what I do know is that this is a State Department operation. That means these decisions were made by the State Department. It means that federal law enforcement have now officially broken and entered into a diplomatic compound that's protected by the Vienna Convention. And it means quite basically that the U.S. government has now just sent a message around the world that no diplomatic compound is safe, that no embassy personnel or building is safe under the protections of the Vienna Convention, that frankly any host country can make the decision that if it's at odds with the leadership of another country, it may simply designate someone else to be the head of that country regardless of elections inside a country, and then hand the embassy over or raid it and enter it regardless of whether or not they have permission from the UN-recognized elected government of a country. This is an extraordinarily dangerous step that the U.S. government has taken, and it's obviously on par with the Trump administration, with Pompeo, with Bolton, with Elliot Abrams, but honestly, for every single Democratic elected official who has been silent, they too should know. With intent, they want their loved ones to return alive, or at least find their remains so they can mourn their deaths. Members of the Waorani indigenous community in Ecuador have protested in Quito to demand that their land rights be respected. Last month, a court ruled that the state violated the rights of indigenous communities because they weren't consulted about oil exploration in their territories. But now members of the community, which live in the Amazon rainforest, are afraid that the ruling might be overturned. 
We, the women of Pastasa community, come to speak in favor of our right to life. We want to have clean water, clean forest, our living culture. We want to live happily in free space and without pollution. The grandparents, the ancestors of our culture, were defenders, jungle caretakers, and did not allow anyone to enter from any culture. They killed them with spears. We do not want to face the government to kill with spears, to threaten. We just come with a lot of respect to ask you to respect our rights. It is the only thing we come to say with all our heart, with all our soul, to respect our decisions and our lives. Following the footsteps of Georgia and Alabama, the U.S. state of Missouri has passed a strict abortion bill banning abortions after eight weeks of pregnancy. The bill only allows abortion in cases when the mother's health is threatened, but not when the pregnancy was a result of rape or incest. The Republican-led Senate approved the legislation by 24 to 10. It now needs a vote of approval in the also Republican-led House before it can go to Republican Governor Mike Parson, who backs it. China has heavily criticized the United States for imposing unilateral sanctions on Chinese entities, including telecom giant Huawei. China's Commerce Ministry says this will further complicate U.S.-China trade talks. On Wednesday, the U.S. Commerce Department added Huawei and 70 affiliates to its so-called entity list. This means the companies are banned from acquiring components and technology from U.S. firms without prior U.S. government approval. U.S. firms are also barred from using telecom parts made by companies deemed to pose a national security risk. China has emphasized many times that the concept of national security should not be abused and that it should not be used as a tool for trade protectionism. China hopes that the relevant country or countries respects market rules and creates a fair, transparent and predictable business environment for companies from different countries, including China. Authorities in France have detained a leader of the disbanded Basque separatist group ETA. 69-year-old Josu Ternera is being held in the haute savoie region and was one of ETA's most high-profile leaders. Spanish authorities accused him of taking part in a 1987 attack in Zaragoza that left 11 people dead, including six children. Ternera announced ETA's complete dismantlement last year, ending a 50-year armed conflict. <laughs> a Kenyan athlete has expressed fear that the new rules on testosterone levels for female athletes will jeopardize the careers of many female athletes. Margaret Wambui, an Olympic bronze medalist, is one of the athletes affected by the ruling of the International Association of Athletics Federation that requires women with high levels of testosterone to take medication to suppress it. The new rules took effect on May 8th after South Africa's two-time Olympic champion, Castor Semenya, lost a legal challenge against them. I'm worried now. I'm, I'm, I'm already worried about my career because I just know that since I was a, a small kid, I, I, I just grew, grew up knowing that this is my career now. So for now, I feel so disappointed by, by that ruling. And for our last story, an academic at the University of Bristol in the United Kingdom is claiming to have cracked the Voynich manuscript. This 15th century work has been described as the world's most mysterious text. The proto-romance language used in the manuscript was supposedly spoken across the Mediterranean region, but rarely written because Latin remained the language of government during the medieval period. And with that, we end our news brief. But remember, you can read more on these stories by checking our website, telestoryenglish.net. And be sure to join us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For Telestory English, I'm Carla Gonzalez. Thank you for watching.